I imagine when they bury me, for real, I'll be wearing a suit something like this. So this is probably uh, good practice since I'm sure I'll get buried tonight, uh, figuratively, before I get buried literally. Uh, in all seriousness, uh, I'm flattered and I'm honored. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, my family's looking forward to it. It's an exciting day and um, I don't know why. I have a feeling that if next year's honoree, his last name begins with T, then I'll know that this was done alphabetically. I was born and raised in Pittsburgh. I love this city and its people. I've had the privilege of being on DVE for over two decades. The listeners are like family. This is a show about what it's like when I step away from the mic. It's going to be pure Pittsburgh. Some laughs, some stories, no BS. Raw. We're here, Jimmy. Hey, here's hoping it's the right room, right? 10 seven. Come in, gentlemen. So I prepare for the roast of Stanley Severin. The ritual, orange, apple, pear. It's out of sequence, people get hurt. It's my pre-show ritual, orange, apple, pear. Not to eat, just to look at. That's why it's wrapped. Maybe he's been obsessed with me by my shirt. I think there's something going on there. <laughs> I mean, actually, you had me so fucking nervous over the shirt, I waited for you. Does this feel like a comedy show or something different? That different. Yeah, they're much different. Why is that? Stand-up show is uh, material that I have been working on throughout the year in, uh, at that, like the corner cafe. You work on... You know, two minutes of material might take six weeks to get two minutes. Every two minutes, you've been working on it forever and ever. So you got the stand-up show down. This show is Stan's Night. So number one, it's Stan's Night. I want it to be special for him. Whoever we roast, it's, it's a special night. Number two, I've been working on the material for, uh, for a while. And I want to get the... Uh, it, but you don't have anywhere to test it. So you, you hope it works. You hope it's funny. But, I really don't fucking know. I got a hunch, but then that, that sometimes that doesn't good. Now a little history of Stan Saverin. Stan first arrived here in 1976. Yeah, that's a very important year because coincidentally, 1976 is the last time Mark Madden saw his dick. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine uh, that the space between my front teeth uh, will come up. Well, I was wondering if anybody ever counted how many pucks you had through your, your five hole right here. How many I went through, you know? I think I would be wondering if you had more than I did. Uh, I would imagine how many times I've been fired in Pittsburgh might come up. Well, they say that you know, being uh, fired is a badge of honor in our industry. Stan, you are the most decorated man in the history of sports. And you're always getting fired. Stan's been canned in Pittsburgh more times than Kevin McClatchy. Um, I would imagine that there'll probably be some suggestions that uh, maybe Guy Junker and I were more than partners. I think it's fair to say that Stan and I are Pittsburgh's number one gay couple. But you know what? Be beautiful women love you. You know? I noticed that beautiful all your life you've attracted beautiful women. They're always they're always around you. You know, I actually tracked down this is a very emotional moment. And it will be for Stan. I tracked down his first girlfriend. Yes, I did. This is Stan's first girlfriend in his life, his first true love. I did a lot of research on this. This is Velma Johnson of Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. I'm here with Stan Saverin's first girlfriend, Velma Johnson of Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. Velma, thank you so much for letting me come into your home 
here and talk about Stan. Uh, what, what an honor. Uh, Velma, what was it like being Stan's girlfriend? Oh, it was wonderful. But, you know, Stan was 10 years older than me, and my parents did not want me to date an older man. Did, did, did it get serious at all? Oh, yes. Yes, it did. But Stan's always put his career first. He'd say, Velma, I want to be on the radio. And I'd say, Stan, they haven't even invented the radio yet. Oh, and, and then he and General Custard, oh, they used to laugh at that all the time when I'd say <laughs> yeah. that. What, 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 do you, what do you miss most about Stan, well, about being me, with him? Let me think. Uh, well, I didn't miss the sex, I'll tell you that. <laughs> now, Velma, we don't have to I get mean, that well, personal. Well, you know, he wasn't very gifted down there. Oh, no, come on, Velma, really. This is <laughs> well, I'm not telling was... you that because, well, I could use it as a Q-tip to clean my ears. Yeah, too much information. Velma, is that, is, that, is that why you broke up? Oh, no, heavens no. They invented the car mm. and penicillin, and then he took off. Oh. Things were going on. Oh, Things were happening. I think he's a selfish bastard. Mm. Oh. Would, would you like to say hello to him right now and wave into the... Camera and say hi. What? We're honoring Stan. You could just say hello right there at the camera. Would you like oh. to say hello? Is he still alive? Oh <laughs> yeah. my! Uh, yeah, yeah. We're honoring him tonight, and you could say hello. Just oh. wave in the camera. Say hi. Go okay. ahead. Okay. Yeah. Hello, Stanley. Oh, I miss you. You know, every time I look at my precious moments figurines, I think of your little. Thelma, thank you so much. Stan's first girlfriend. We appreciate. I appreciate that. Well, I really do. Well, you know, I really loved him. I know you did. I he know. was as sure. ugly as f but oh, I loved. Uh, we loved him. We lo we, yes. Wait, what do you mean, we? We. Well, when he what left, I had one in the oven. Oh, oh. Wait a second. You, st you had a ch a child with. Yes, I had a with son. With a son. Yes, named Ernie. Would you like to meet him? Yes, yes, I'd love to meet him. Ernie! Ernie. Stan's come here. son, Ernie. Come here, honey. For the first and time. Say hello to your daddy. To oh, hi, daddy. I'm so excited. I've been waiting my whole life to play ball with you. I have also reminded everyone on the dais who will be doing the roasting that I speak last. So go ahead, take your shot but I speak last. Bill, comedy's a tough gig, keep at it. But until then, have my car waiting for me when I'm done here tonight, I'll try. <laughs> Randy Bauman is the Bob Cratchit of radio, just on his knees begging for scraps from Ebenezer Crenn. The heart issue I had about a year and a half ago, but I've also had some problems with my back. But it's not that much of a surprise when I've had to carry Guy around for 25 years. <laughs> Jimmy, what do you think, buddy? Oh, uh, so much fun. It was a blast, man. I think of your little Thelma, thank you so much.